In this section, we will perform protective device coordination in ATAP. And before entering into the topic, I assume that you are well aware of various protective schemes, basics of power system protection and switch gears. So in this lecture, we will be talking about relays and their terminologies associated with relays. So relays are the protective elements that are used in power system in order to detect the fault in the power system. And upon the detection of fault, we provide the trip signals which are provided by the relay to the circuit breakers. So the circuit breaker then isolates the faulty part of the power system from the healthy part. Relays are classified depending upon their type, make, characteristics and more. So in this lesson we will be talking about three classifications that will be type, make and characteristics. And depending upon the type there are several relays such as the overcurrent relay, earth fault relay, directional relay, differential relay, distance relay, frequency relay, voltage relay, reverse power relay and so on. There are more classifications and these are only the example of some types of relays and depending upon their construction we can also say that is depending upon their make there are electromechanical relays electronic relays digital relays and the numeric relay uh, the numeric relay is the advanced relay that we have now and before going into the next classification i will be talking about the time current curves TCC curves. So TCC curves gives the relationship between the current and the trip time or the plug setting multiplier of the relay and the time taken by the relay to trip. So I will explain later in this video. So depending upon the type we can classify relays as definite time relay, the inverse definite minimum time and in this the inverse definite minimum time we have various other classifications such as normally inverse extremely inverse and so on so this is the tcc graph over here we have the current or the multiples of plug setting and over here we have the time so the idmt curve is as shown here this is the very inverse idmt and the extremely inverse idmt what this means is that as the fault current increases when you see in the definite time regardless of the current the relay will trip at almost the same time for any fault so even if the severity of the fault is very high the time taken for the relay to trip is definite so that is definite time relays then we have the inverse definite minimum time the inverse definite minimum time has a curve like this. So in this case, when the severity of the fault increases, the time taken by the relay will be less. So when we compare the very inverse CARA with the extremely inverse CARA, you can see for the same amount of fault current or the same amount of current over here, we get smaller operating time and for the very inverse curve we have a bit more operating time so that is the difference between very inverse and extremely inverse and normally inverse there are many curves such as normally inverse short inverse very inverse extremely inverse and so on inside the idmt itself relay terms so next we will be discussing some of the relay terminologies and the first one is the pickup current the pickup current is simply the current at which the relay begins to operate. So taking the analogy of electromechanical relays, we have two torques which are in opposite to each other that is the deflecting torque and the controlling torque. The pickup current is that amount of current which causes the deflecting torque to just rise above the controlling torque. And the current setting, it is the current at which the relay should operate which is given in percentages. So adjusting the number of turns in case of electromechanical relay we can set the pickup current or adjust the current setting of the relay. And the next term we have is the plug setting multiplier. So the plug setting multiplier is the ratio of the fault current in the relay to its pickup current. 
and then we have the time setting multiplier the time setting multiplier is the time delay setting of the relay so this will be explained using the graph so here we have again a tcc curve so in the tcc curve you can see the various time multiplier setting here it is shown as tds so this is the time multiplier setting and when we increase the time multiplier setting you can see the time taken for operation will differ even if the same pickup is provided so here you can see the time taken for the relay using this graph is only 0.3 seconds whereas for a TMS of 1.1 we have the time taken for the operation to be greater than 3 seconds so that is the difference when setting the time multiplier setting and now we will discuss more about our current relays so our current relay is one of the oldest form of power system protection that is still in use so nowadays we have several sophisticated protective schemes but still we have backup protection of our current relay and earth fault relay we either use the 3 over current plus 1 earth fault or 2 over current plus earth fault and the over current relay is also classified depending upon the characteristics there is the definite time relay the inverse definite minimum time or the instantaneous and comparing with the definite time and the IDMT instantaneous have negligible time of operation and I will show you this in the next lesson so next we will be talking about protection coordination and why we require protection coordination and this will be demonstrated in the next lesson so here we have a radial system over here and we have a fault at this point which is farthest from the source so the fault is a three phase fault and the coordination time interval or the CTI is 0.3 seconds this value actually depends upon the industry standard or the code it differs upon the IEC code and the NC code and the pickup current or is usually 1.25 and again this depends upon the code or the industry standard or usually from the protection engineers experience and this is a general rule of thumb so usually the pickup current will be 25 percent more than the load current and 0.6 times the fault current so the relay should be able to differentiate between the load current and the fault current and this is a table showing the inverse characteristic equations this is according to the IEC standard and according to the IEC standard the equations for the curves are shown here and this is the standard inverse and the very inverse curve and the extremely inverse curve so here you can see the time of operation is directly proportional to the time multiplier setting so using the time multiplier setting we can adjust this and it also depends upon the magnitude of the fault current as well so here we will be following the IEC standard equations and in order to perform the coordination the first thing we have to see is that we always begin the coordination from our load end and not from the source end so we must always keep this in mind and we should classify our power system into different zones and we have to assign protection to that zones beginning from the load end so first we will choose the relay and we put in a time multiplier setting of 0.025 no intentional delay is provided because R1 is not acting as a backup for any other relay 
if we look over here you can see what we are trying to coordinate is that when a fault occurs at the, this point over here the relay r1 should operate if the relay r1 fails to operate the relay r2 should operate and if the relay r2 fails to operate r3 should operate and so on so we should provide enough time between these relays so in this case if r1 does not operate r2 should operate so r2 should be provided with enough time so that the fault if cleared by r1 does not cause r2 to operate so the time of operation for r2 will be greater than that of r1 so here we are coordinating the relay operation by setting the time grading so the pickup current let us assume a value of the pickup current and for the fault on this section again this is 500 amps so the fault current is 500 amps the pickup current is 160 amps so what we are assuring is that the pickup current is in between the load current and the fault current so we will calculate the plug setting multiplier and from the fault current the actual pickup current this is the ratio of the fault current to the actual pickup current that is 3.125 and using the TCC curve we will calculate the operating time we know the time setting multiplier that we have set over here so the time of operation of the relay can be obtained from the IEC normal inverse equation so the time of operation is 0.15 seconds and for the case of R2 here the pickup will be a little more than that of R1 or we can actually put it at the same pickup values and we calculate the plug or setting multiplier which is 2.99 and the expected operating time for the relay 2 is actually the operating time for the relay 1 and the coordination time interval so this will be 0.45 seconds so we will set the TMS from this equation so we will substitute the time of operation and obtain the TMS for this relay so we have the TMS for this relay and we calculate the maximum fault current over here and the time of operation for the fault current as well so the time of operation is 0.24 second in a similar way we have to coordinate the operation of the relay from the load end to the source end and if you see over here you can see we have provided a coordination time interval over here so that if relay r1 does not act and after a particular period of time after that only relay 2 will operate so this is the essence of protective device coordination and in the next lesson we will go to etap to perform protective device coordination and see you in the next lesson